a wasted two years. That's how Saxo's chief economist, Dean Jakobsen, sums up the effect 2016 has had so far on global markets. Three weeks into 2016, we have lost all of the gains from 2015 and 2014. And if you think about the whole exercise of quantitative easing, being that you inflate the assets, of course it is wasted time that it takes merely you know, three to four weeks to take away with two years of endless printing from central bank has set in motion. Underneath that, of course, we are still lacking the fiscal uh, response. We are also missing really the mandate for change, which we continue to talk about in our macro pieces. But Warnstein, don't blame it all on China. I'm confused by the present sort of excuses uh, and the excuse being made of China. China slowing down is not new news to anyone in the marketplace. If so, they need to have all of their school money back. We've been going from 15% to 6% gradually. I think I will even be able to predict next quarter GDP from China. It will be 0.1 to 0.2% lower than, than it was last time. And that's how it's been all the time. But I think in reality, why China is such a scapegoat is that no one wants to look at the real root of the issue, which is that the cost of money is continuing to rise. And as we have the most potent central bank in the world, Federal Reserve, insisting on three to four rate hikes or in total 75 to 100 basis points worth of hikes in 2016, the price of money and the trajectory of the price of money remains to the upside. That is what's costing uh, the corporation profit. That's why we see a stronger dollar. That's why we see lower commodities. So in end game here, it's really about excuses, not about the reality, in my opinion. So what does Steen think should be the focus? The price of money, the uh, oil prices as inputs to energy, and China as the demand function. All of that is tied together by the US dollar. If the US dollar is stronger, it reduces the potential for output anywhere in the world because we run a simple and primitive economy which is dollar-based. If the dollar is weaker, we have stability and potential to escape again the fundamental changes of society. Steen came into 2016 short, so how is he trading the bear market now? I continue to buy calls on the DAX, on the S&P and NASDAQ uh, uh, to play on the upside and the bounce because I think with China being the main focus, I think the next sort of change in tune will be a refocus on the Federal Reserve and Fed's inability to deliver the three to four hikes they promised. The market is saying, listen, we are at exactly 1.7 hikes this year, or about 40, 42 basis point versus 75 to 80. So we are in a Mexican, stand, Mexican standoff. Whoever blinks first is going to keep and keep the, the serving right in terms of where the market goes next, i.e. if Fed backs down, the market will find support. If Fed remains elevated with three to four hikes pre uh, predicted, then the market will see additional pressure to the downside. And in that condition, I think optionality is a great way to play the Fed actually again and again, as they always done in the past comes out and support the market by saying, oh, it's not going to be three to four. First, it will be two to three, then one to two, and ultimately, potentially not even moving at all in 2016. So I think you play that side, but I think there are fundamental value across the board, especially in the sectors like credit, uh, the yield, the effective yield you have on a lot of the credit derivative products right now in the ETF space is very interesting. And I think, again, energy, commodity cycle, as soon as the dollar turns, we will see support for this sector.